Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. Welcome to the second part of my pattern matching tutorial. In the first part, I shared more of an introduction about pattern matching and the things that you need to consider when you're working with a fabric that has a pattern. In this part of the tutorial, we're actually going to be looking at how to cut out your garment in your fabric and achieve that match through all of the pieces. We're going to be looking at the key areas that you need to achieve the match in and how to work best to actually get a match between the seams. Now I'm going to be working with my Copen pattern, which is a free pattern for a simple shift dress or top, and you can download it from my website. If you're a complete beginner with pattern matching, then it may actually be a good place to start because you'll be able to follow me through the whole of the cutting out of the garment. Obviously though, as always, the same rules apply and if you're working with a different pattern, then it doesn't matter. You can apply the rules and the techniques that we're going to be covering in this tutorial. Now the first thing that I would recommend if you are creating a garment from a patterned fabric is that you test the garment first. Make it in a plain fabric, make a calico toile or a muslin and just check the fit. What you don't want to be doing is adjusting the fit of the garment once you have made it because obviously the pattern that we match will no longer match if you have to make any adjustments. Now throughout the tutorial I'm going to be working with this charcoal check fabric but obviously you're going to have a different fabric so don't worry about that. We'll discuss differences as we go through the tutorial and generally the same rules apply. You're going to need to collect your fabric and the pattern that you want to work with and then you can join me back here and we'll look at the adjustments you need to make to the pattern to get started. If you're working with a pattern that isn't on tissue paper then I recommend that you trace it out onto a thick tracing paper like you see here or some translucent paper like you can purchase for a projector. Obviously it is easier to see through this paper compared to standard pattern cutting paper and therefore if you are a beginner you will find it easier to be able to see through your dressmaking pattern to look at the markings on the fabric and look at the pattern on the fabric that you want to match. Now the preparation continues. The next thing that you might want to do, and again this is very good if you're a beginner, is to draw on your stitching line or draw on the seam allowances for your pattern. Now with this pattern that I'm working with, they are five eighths of an inch. So I'm simply going to use my ruler and I'm lining up the edge of the pattern with the five eighths marking on my ruler. And I will draw this on with a nice sharp pencil. And I'll work my way down doing that. And this will help me because it will allow me to see where the seam allowance or the stitching line of the pattern finishes and where the seam allowance is when we're matching. Now if you are a complete beginner I would actually recommend that you draw these on and then remove them, cut them away as you will find that it is easier to work with. If you have had to match before and this is more of a refresher course then obviously you're welcome to keep them on there and we'll be folding them out of the way as we're matching. Remember to do different amounts of seam allowances for the hems if they are different on the pattern that you're working with. If you find a ruler like this difficult to use, then you can purchase rulers that have nice green bars if you're working with 5 8 or 1.5 centimeters. The other option is actually to use a tape measure. Do check, but the tape measure that I'm working with here is actually 5 8 of an inch in width, 1.5 centimeters. So I could use that instead if I wanted to. And obviously when you're working around curves, you just need to pivot the tape measure or ruler as you're doing this. Create lots of dashed lines that overlap each other. You can then go ahead and cut off your seam allowance. Make sure that you're being accurate and cutting on the line. I always recommend taking nice long scissor cuts across the whole of the blade. That will actually give you a sharper, smoother line rather than the jagged lines that you can otherwise achieve. 
and you're going to need to do this to all of the pattern pieces that you're working with unless they have a cut on fold marking or no seam allowance added. And obviously you'll be removing the seam allowance that is suitable for your pattern. It might not be the same as mine. Over any curved areas, I'm just aiming for the majority of the line. I've got lots of little straight lines that have dashed over one another. So I'm looking for the consistent line that moves through this area, just like so. Remember to write on the pattern pieces that they have no seam allowance once you have removed it. Now if you have a pattern piece that's cut on the fold, because when you're pattern matching you need to cut out in a single layer, we're going to need to create a whole single layered pattern. So you're going to need to trace off two opposites of the pattern piece and stick them together along the cut on fold line like I have done here. And I'll show you how to do this quickly now. Obviously you won't need to remove any seam allowance along the cut on fold line because no seam allowance will have been added in the first place. You will simply be abutting the two edges together. But seam allowances will need to be removed or drawn on in the other locations. Trace around the pattern piece. If your paper is thick enough, then you can trace up against it. Otherwise, you may need to position your pattern piece underneath the paper and trace through it. Make sure that you're nice and accurate with your lines. Or alternatively, trace through like so. Mark all of the notches and details onto the second pattern piece as well. Once I've cut out two opposites, I need to tape them together along that cut on fold centre front line. It might not be that it's your centre front, but it will be a cut on fold line of some description. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure that you're nice and accurate as you're taping this. Just like so. You might want to put a bit of tape on both sides to hold it nice and steady. Okay. Now, recorded all the details. I have already got those on the one side, so that's fine and I'm going to need to draw on my seam allowances all the way around now and cut them off if you want to do that. Now that your pattern pieces are ready, you have got all of your cut and fold pieces as a one piece. You've drawn on or cut away your seam allowances. We can go to the fabric. Begin by positioning your fabric onto your cutting surface in a single layer with the right side facing up. And that's always how you will begin if you're pattern matching. I do recommend that you pre-treat your fabric how you plan to wash it in the future. So whether that be in the washing machine, tumble dryer, whatever you plan to do to the fabric in the future, do to your fabric before you begin. Give it a nice press so it's nice and flat before you work with it. And I would always recommend holding it down onto your table with some form of weights. Doesn't have to be anything fancy like I've got here. It can just be tins, but something to hold it onto your table. We're going to begin by working with the front pattern piece or the center front panel if you have perhaps a princess seam or more seams to your front of your garment. Generally speaking, the front of the garment is going to be the bit you will start with because visually it's the most important part of the garment. Take your pattern piece and you're going to position that onto your single layer of right side up fabric. Whenever you're cutting out your fabric, I would always try and make sure that all of the fabric is on the work surface, if possible, or perhaps you could cut on the floor if you haven't got a table large enough, simply because, and this obviously with pattern matching is even more important, you don't want the fabric to be weighed down and for the pattern to be stretched or distorted so that it's incorrect when you actually go to cut it out. Now, I've got my front pattern piece on top of my fabric here, and we're going to be applying the first rule. So we're saying the center front of this is the most important part visually. We want to place the center front line either on a dominant vertical line or in between two dominant vertical lines. So for this check, I've decided I will be positioning it in between the light gray, so we're gonna be hitting right in the middle 
of the light grey, so right down the charcoal grey. And obviously with your pattern, you would be thinking about these things. So if you had a vertical stripe, plaid or check, the same rules would apply. You're going to be looking at that centre front and either positioning it on or in between two dominant vertical lines. And you want it to travel from the top to the bottom of the pattern piece through the same line. You don't want it to drift off and you want it to be right in the centre or on. Now, if you have a pictured print here, you might not have anything as obvious as this. So you're going to be looking at the printed fabric and looking at what stands out. As I mentioned in my introduction tutorial, you don't want to be putting anything over the apexes of the bust. Hopefully these will be marked on your pattern as little circles or crosses or perhaps just a line. But at least you'll know that you don't want any part of the picture on those two areas there. You want to be positioning the picture on a flattering area for your body. So think about your shape and what would look good on you. You could always drape the fabric on the mannequin if you wanted to or around yourself to see what looks best. Now once I've started lining things up, I can use my weights to hold my pattern in place. I may also want to use some pins to pin down the pattern piece. I would always recommend that you pin in the seam allowances, but it, depending on what you've decided to go with, either your seam allowances will be removed or they'll be drawn on like I've got here. If they've been removed, then obviously you will be pinning near the edge of the garment. Just check that you're using the right pins for your fabric, so if you're working with silk, silk pins will be required. Once you're happy with your vertical lines, you then want to look at your horizontal lines if you're working with a stripe, plaid or check. You want to see if you've got any lines that are more prominent than others horizontally across your fabric. If so, you want to consider where you place those, and obviously this will depend on the repeat of the pattern, so how often that part of the pattern is seen again. For mine, for example, my light grey stripe or check is repeated quite often, approximately an inch and a half, three centimetres apart. If you had a much greater repeat, and perhaps you had a very prominent crosswise stripe, such as an orange stripe, you would want to stay away from putting that on the larger areas of your body. That could be your bust, waist or hip, depending on your shape. It's all about matching the pattern in the right place for your individual figure. Now, with the fabric that I'm working with, I don't really have a dominant crosswise or horizontal um, stripe or plaid or check that I need to position in a certain location and my repeat is so close that I'm always going to have some part of this pattern in my bust, waist or hip. But what I do need to make certain of is that my pattern is symmetrical. Obviously I've cut out or I'm going to be cutting out the whole of my front that would normally be cut on the fold. We can't cut it on the fold because we're pattern matching. So we're going to be cutting it in a one piece and we need to make sure that the two sides are the same. You need to be looking at the edges of your pattern here. That's either going to be the lines, so the stitching lines that you've drawn on, or if you've cut away your seam allowance, it's going to be the edge of the paper pattern. And you want to look through it or to the edge of it and have a look and see where this shoulder point here is on the pattern and where it is on the other side. If you can see mine, you'll notice that the shoulder point here is much closer to a vertical stripe than it is over here on the left side. So I'm going to need to shift my fabric over ever so slightly as I pin. You can get really pernickety with this and obviously you can measure everything. Once you're happy with an area, pop a pin in and then move on to the next area. So we could go to the outside of the shoulder. Does it look even in that check? I think it does, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and pin. And you would do this all the way around the first pattern piece. And that's gonna be this front piece, looking at the underarm, looking at the bust area, the bust darts, and where the hem finishes on both sides. We want to make sure that that hem is straight across. Join me at the hem now. Work your way down to the hem, making sure that, that centre front line is in the right position. 
and I actually do put some pins through on the center front line holding it in the correct place along the plaid. I wouldn't normally do this to some fabric because I have found in the past that my pins have potentially scagged the fabric so I wouldn't normally pin through the center of a pattern but as long as you test that and you're happy with it then that's fine and I do find that it makes it easier to hold everything in place. Now at the hemline you've got two options. The first one is at the finished line of the hem so the line that you've drawn on or the edge of your pattern finishes in between two dominant crosswise or horizontal lines. That will obviously make the hem less visible. It won't be as eye-catching finishing between the lines. If however you have a plaid and you have a very key crosswise or dominant crosswise line you may want to position the hem just beneath this so that the dominant line continues around the body along the hemline. Obviously this is slightly pattern dependent because you will need to make sure that the hem of your pattern is straight. If it is then it's an option you can consider. For this one I'm going to be positioning my hemline in between the grey, light grey line, so I'm on the centre of the check in the charcoal area. And I'm going to get this all pinned down and then we can start considering the next pattern piece which is going to be the back. Now with this pattern we're going to have two things to consider. The first one being the centre back because that's also very visually important. The second one being the side seams. Now the front pattern piece is pinned on and generally it would be cut on the fold but because we're matching a pattern we have created one piece and we've made sure that we're happy with the pattern of the fabric that we've chosen for the centre front, for the hem, for any other horizontal areas, bust, waist and hip and we've made sure that it is symmetrical or the pattern of the fabric is symmetrical on both sides for say areas like the shoulder, the underarm, the side seam, everywhere basically you want to be checking it's completely symmetrical. Now we're going to move on to our next piece with this pattern which is the back. For you if you're working with a pattern that perhaps has a princess seam or another seam in the front you might be working with that next because again that's the most visually noticeable. Then you would work around the body to the back, the centre back being key. So if you have lots of seams in your pattern, start with the centre front, work from the centre front out towards the side, then start again with the centre back with the aim to get a match through the sides panels of your back piece matching at the side as best you can. When it comes to a match at the side it does depend on how shaped the side is and if there is a dart. Obviously if there is a dart it's going to throw things off. So where do you match? We're going to match below the dart in this instance. There's only a small bit of area above the dart and this is going to be covered by the arm. So we're going to go with a match below the dart because again that's the most noticeable or the most visual area of the garment that you will see. My back piece is here. Now my back piece I'm going to be cutting two. The first one I'm going to be cutting with this pattern the second one I'm going to be showing you will be cutting with the fabric that we've actually cut out. Now we need to look at getting a nice centre back line. The centre back is the same rule as the centre front. So on or in between a dominant vertical stripe or check or plaid. Visually if you have got a pattern, a printed picture, Another area that you don't want to have too large trees or anything totally visual is across the hip of the back where the bottom would be. Now a simple way to match the back to the front here would be to position the pack back like it is now really against the front piece and to horizontally match the pattern at the waist and at the hip. However, it's not always as easy as that and you may not have enough fabric to simply work all of your pieces across the width of the fabric. So what do you do in those situations? Well, what I tend to do is I take a pencil and a ruler and I work my way over my pattern piece, drawing the check onto the pattern. 
So I'm copying the fabric pattern, whether that be a check, stripe, plaid, even a picture, I sometimes do, do this as well. Say you had elephants or something and you were trying to match the elephants. I would simply sketch the elephant on and the parts of the elephant that I could see. This can also be done if you're working with normal paper. And actually it isn't so required with the um, tissue paper or the tracing paper because you can see through it. Okay, I'll do this small patch here so that you can see. So I'm drawing my checks on. You don't need many, you only need really the one that's closest to your stitching line that we're working with here. And then you're going to take the back piece and we're going to abut them. Stitching line for stitching line. Now, we should be able to match them together. Again, the paper's nice and see-through and you should have some notches that need to match together at the side seam. Or you could start at the hem and work your way up. And what we're gonna do when we've matched the pieces is to continue the markings from the front onto the back. And you'll find we've got a match at this one location here, but to get to the next point, we are going to have to pivot the back. We are matching that stitching line one on top of each other. If you have cut away your um, seam allowances, then you'll just be matching the edges of the paper. And you'll also want to get the vertical parts of the check as well. And you'll keep doing this. So the next one, next one, and you'll work your whole way down completing this. So we're effectively walking the pattern pieces together, stitching lines are one on top of each other, and then we're copying the pattern from the front at that seam onto the back at that seam, because we want it to be the same. Let me show you a bit more of a close up. So this is the front pattern piece here with the hem along the bottom. And this is my back. And I'm again going to be positioning that stitching line of the front and the back directly on top of it. Or if you've cut them off, you're going to be matching the two edges of your pattern together like that. Whichever works best for you. If you're a beginner, I would recommend matching the edges of the paper together. And now I might want to pop something on as a weight. There we go. And then I'll take my ruler and I can draw the lines across. So that's the horizontal line there that we want, that's that one. And we also want to take these vertical lines because we want to try and position, if at all possible, the vertical lines correct as well at this join. And you would work your way up doing the same thing. Now, as I said, if you're working with normal paper, you will probably need to pencil the lines onto the front piece first and then see them through as you're going to be positioning the back. But obviously, if you're working with tissue paper or tracing paper, they're nice and easy to see. Complete that for the whole of the side seam and then we're going to see what we can match and look at the centre back. So now we want to look at the placement of our back pattern piece. And we have got two things to worry about here. The first one is the center back placement. So the placement of the center back is the same as the center front. You want the center back stitching line to be sitting on or in between a dominant vertical line. I went in between the light gray lines for the front, so I'm going to do the same for the back for consistency and I'm going to want to make sure that I'm happy with that. At the same time, I connect the crosswise or horizontal lines that we marked on below the dart at the side seam. So let me take you down to the hem where it will be easiest to work on those. This is my front pattern piece already pinned and this is the back that we're working on. Now, we want to achieve two things with the back. The first one we discussed was that the center back was on or between the vertical lines. And the second one is these markings along the side seam here. We want to try and get a match below the dart for the side seam. So the best place to start is at the hem, because again, we want to get a match for the hem. We want to make sure that the hem on the front that we decided to be putting in between my two light gray lines, the rule for that is either in between a dominant crosswise or at the bottom of 
a dominant crosswise so that you can see the stripe around the bottom. We want to do the same for the back so that we have a match there. So again, like I said at the start with the back, it is easy because for this bit of fabric, I can simply match up the hems and I'm probably going to get near to close a match, but I might still need to tweak it slightly. So I'm then gonna work my way up the side seam, making sure that I have got my red lines, I've drawn them in red to be nice and clear for you to see, on a horizontal line if possible. I've also got that vertical line that I would also like to achieve, but I can't achieve that at the sake of the center back. So this is where you start to think about the most important thing and you have to prioritize the areas of the pattern that you will see or that are more visual than others. So I would have to say the center back is more important than a vertical line at the side. If I can achieve both, then great. But center back is number one. Number two, is the crosswise lines. Number three would be a vertical line at the side. Work to pin your pattern piece on, achieving as many matches as you possibly can. And I've got all of these horizontal ones here are matching up, which is nice. And my center back is all good in the center. but I don't think I can achieve my vertical line down the side here. It's gonna be slightly off and achieve my center back in the middle. So I'm going to have to go with the center back and ignore the vertical line at the side there. And then you're just gonna keep working your way up, pinning the back piece in. And as with everything, we are looking at the stitching line here, always working with the stitching line. That's what matters, not the extra seam allowance. We currently have one front piece and that is all we need for that, and one back piece. We need to cut two back pieces, so I will be showing you how to cut the other side of the back shortly. We're actually going to be cutting it using the fabric from this side so that we achieve a perfect match. The next thing you need to do is to do the sleeve. Obviously, you may have more pattern pieces than I do, but you'll work with all of the body pattern pieces first, and then we'll move on to the sleeve. Here is the sleeve. So, the rules with the sleeve. The first one is that the center of the sleeve, so your notch where it joins the shoulder seam, should be positioned on or in between a vertical dominant line. Now, the sleeve match at the front is obviously more important than the sleeve match at the back. So we're always going to work with the front first. And we're going to be working with the front, which is the single notch, the back is the double notch. So the sleeve has already had the seam allowances removed. The other good thing about this paper is that you can turn it over and still see all of your markings. So when we are matching, a sleeve at the front, the most important part of the match is going to be approximately where the notch is or above the notch. We don't need to worry about underneath because that bit's gonna be covered by the arm. What I generally like to do is to start matching the notch to the shoulder seam. And again, we're working with the shoulder seam as I said, I cut the seam allowances off the sleeve to show you what I would do with this, but I've still got them on my body garment. It doesn't matter if you have them on or have them off. The key thing is that you're working with the stitching line. So I've matched the top notch to the shoulder seam. I'm then going to pivot this around to get my first horizontal line and I will draw that on and then I'll pivot around again and get my second horizontal line and draw that on. And you could get a vertical line in here as well if you wanted to. And I can probably get one more. And then we get down to the notch. And I wouldn't bother going any further than the notch. So the notch and above the notch is the key bit you want to match. It's this area here. Again, what do you see most visually? It's gonna be across the top of the chest and shoulder area. 
then for the back you're going to do the same thing and I always do the front and the back at this point and then I take a look and see if I can achieve either of them obviously the front is more important so once again I'm matching the notch up with the shoulder of the back and I will work my way along drawing and pivoting the sleeve like so above the notch or notches because there are two notches for the back perfect so we've got those details on I'll go over them in a red pen for you so they're really clear to see and I'll show you how we put this on the fabric unless it's a really key feature of your pattern I wouldn't worry too much about the shoulder join between the front and the back unfortunately it's quite rare that you can achieve this as well as your centre back and your side seam. The same rules would apply to what we did at the side seam if you want to try and match the shoulder as well. So the sleeve is probably the most difficult part of pattern matching. The first thing with the sleeve, the easy rule, is that the centre of the sleeve should be on a dominant vertical line or in between two. I'm going to go with in between my light grey lines and that's the notch at the top of your sleeve that wants to be sitting and you want the sleeve to be sitting straight in that. The next step is to think about these points and we're going to be working with the front first so that's the single notch that's the most important part and I've actually gone ahead and cut out my front because I know we were happy with that. Um, I have marked everything on this so I used my carbon paper and I just wanted to do this so that you can see what we're aiming for here because otherwise I think it's a bit difficult. So what you want to achieve with your match is that when this is sewn together and I'm just folding in my stitching line you end up with if I show you like this we want a connection point like this here so we have a line coming across the bodice of the garment horizontally. That is just going to connect into a horizontal line across the sleeve. You cannot achieve any more than that. Let me show you in closer up detail. So we are aiming at these red lines that I've drawn to try and connect them to horizontal lines on the sleeve. And you will probably only get it in a couple of locations. It will probably be in about the middle of the area between the notch and the top. Remember that your sleeve will have some ease in it, which is a positive because it actually allows you to get more of a match than perhaps you can achieve at this point because the sleeve will be slightly larger than the armhole it will allow a little bit of give around these matching points so if I position this next to this you will see we are aiming for a match here and it's going to connect like so and it may be that we can achieve a match at this one as well it might not be. It will depend on whether we get a little bit of ease as we work through. So I would aim to match the middle one and then you may find when you're sewing this together that you can achieve both the top and the bottom one. Actually I believe our bottom one is going to match there as well. So that's fine and we're happy with the centre is in the right point. We're in the middle of this, um, this check. Once you're happy with the front, pop a pin in and we can take a look at the back. As I said, the back does not matter as much as the front, but by the looks of things, we have got a match here. This one is sitting onto the line here. And again, we probably aren't gonna hit anything. We may hit that when we're sewing it, and the same with the one below. Once you're happy with your matching at the sleeve, you can work to pin this on. Remember my sleeve pattern, I did actually cut off the seam allowances just to show you an alternative option. And really, the method of cutting off the seam allowances is something I definitely do if my fabric frays a lot. The problem with fabric that frays a lot and pattern matching is that you end up unsure about how much seam allowance you have left. An example of this is if you're making a Chanel style jacket using a loose tweed, a taped tweed or a boucle. You can find that it can disintegrate quite a lot as you're working with it. 
In those circumstances, I always pattern match without seam allowances, and I actually thread trace my stitching line on so that it's still nice and clear no matter how much of the extra fabric disintegrates. I also normally leave larger seam allowances of approximately an inch, 2.5 centimeters, to allow for fabric to um, fray away. So that's something that you can do if you want to, so that you're nice and clear where your marking points are. If not, then once you have pinned your pattern on, you will need to grab your ruler, and I would recommend some kind of chalk or a pen or pencil, um, something that isn't gonna damage the fabric, um, but obviously it is in your seam allowance, and you would just mark on your seam allowances everywhere so that when you cut it out, you would cut this out on the chalk line. And you would do this for the one side. The second side, you're gonna be doing the same technique that I'm gonna show you for the back now, and that's to cut a copy of exactly the same. When it comes to the hem of the sleeve, we didn't speak about that, you can use exactly the same process as with the hem of the garment. You either want it to finish at the bottom of a dominant crosswise line, or you want it to finish in between two dominant crosswise lines. Now the final pieces that you may need to pin onto your fabric are your facing pieces. So the facing pieces generally I would cut out by copying the same as the exterior piece. This is my back facing. I'm going to pop that directly on top of the back piece here and this one fits perfectly I believe and then put my weight on it, take my pencil and my ruler, and I would trace the lines of the check, plaid or pattern or whatever it was you were copying. And then I can position this on in a second and get a perfect match. So here is my facing piece and I would simply position that on making sure that I matched all the horizontal and vertical lines. And I could do the same for the front facing, a copy of the front pattern. The next step is to cut out. Now, I would always recommend that you pin on all of your pattern pieces first onto the fabric so that you make sure that you can get them on the fabric, you've got enough fabric, and also so that you can make sure you're happy with all the matching that you've done. Once you've got your first layer on, you will then cut them out so that you can create a perfect match for your second side of the body. Use scissors or a cutting board and a rotary cutter to cut out the garment. You want to make sure that all of the fabric is on the table when you're doing this so that you're not stretching the pattern out of shape. And I would always recommend that when you're cutting out, but it's very important with patterned fabric. If you're using scissors, take nice long cuts using the full use of the blade and simply work your way around the garment, keeping them as flat as possible as you're doing it. For any parts of the garment where you need to cut two of something, you firstly need to cut out the first part that we pattern matched a minute ago, and this is the back piece that I'm working with here. And I will do the same for the sleeve and for the back facing for this pattern. The other pieces are cut on the fold, so I'm only cutting one of them because we made them into a single pattern. For these pieces, you're going to cut them out Mark any markings that you need with tailor's chalk or thread tracing or carbon paper and then you can remove the paper pattern. Then you're going to be positioning the fabric with the right side down against the right side of the fabric so the right sides are together. To cut out your second side you are simply going to match up the pattern. So you're going to work your way it doesn't matter where you start, but you're aiming for a match everywhere. And you can pin it as you go. And you should find that it will start to look invisible if you have it correct. You won't be able to see, or hardly be able to see, where one starts and the other ends. 
And this is what you will do to cut the second side so that you're creating an absolute symmetrical copy with all the pattern matching already completed. Now, there are very rare occurrences where this doesn't work. I had a customer a couple of weeks ago in one of my Chanel jacket classes and her fabric did not repeat. We managed to cut out the first half of her body across the width of the fabric, pretty much. And then we had to actually continue working around the body. So in those cases, we just continued working around from the centre back through to the other side of the centre front. It was the horizontal stripe in her fabric that was almost just thrown in completely randomly. So just something to remember because you may come across a fabric one day that's like that. And again, if you've got a, perhaps a big print, it could be like that. You might find that it doesn't really repeat in the same way. So you want to work your way around the body. Once you are happy that you've got this all pinned on, you're again going to cut it out. And you're just going to work very carefully, making sure that you cut it out the same as the top layer. So now I'm working to cut the second side out. I've put lots of pins in here to try and make it really accurate. And I'm just working my way along, cutting to the edge of that top layer of fabric. Once you've cut out the second layer, you're going to want to make sure that you copy any of the details that you marked on your first layer onto the second using carbon paper, tailor's tacks, thread tracing, whatever your preferred method is. And then you can open them up and you should have two symmetrical pieces here, just like so. Now, just something to think about, if you had decided that you needed to thread trace around your pattern piece because the fabric was going to fray, you would need to do the same for the second side that you've cut here now. So although you would have still used the first side to cut the second, you would then need to put the pattern piece back on, make sure that it matched with the thread tracing on the first one, and then thread trace all the way around. This will allow you to have a bit of flexibility if your seam allowances fray a lot. There we go, we've matched all of the pattern pieces needed for my Copen pattern, which is a shift dress or top. Hopefully you've been able to follow along with the garment that you're working with. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that you feel more confident when it comes to matching patterns in the future. Please stay tuned for the third part of the tutorial where I'm going to be covering how to actually stitch the seams together and make sure that you achieve the same pattern matching that you planned in this tutorial. Good luck with your sewing and see you soon.